rubbing front legs together, and now and then his back legs. Suddenly, I loved this precious fly so strongly. As if in response, he turns, facing me directly, and stops all moving, poised and quiet. I admire his delicacy, ability, perfection. The moment stretches, swallowing time. We are brothers, I feel it, created by the same mysterious hand. He flies to my shoulder. I feel blessed. There is a communion in this room, a sacred moment of understanding. We are safe in each other's presence and free. Infinite love fills every space in the universe.
but i'll share with you how i see abusive systems interacting in ways we may not easily see we are all conditioned by hidden systems of violence if we can just pause to think we can each stop our unknowing complicity in them there is no such thing as a perfect vegan perfection is an illusion and guilt is not the goal but there is power and promise in every step taken with an increased awareness and compassionate attitude my husband greg says we're all on a path and i agree born in the 1950s i grew up in rural medina new york go medina every single day i ate and for animal products just like everyone else in my world given that my ancestors ate and wore animals i never thought to question it my parents had what we now call backyard hens every so often dad would chop the head off one of them and we'd have chicken for dinner so conditioned we thought nothing of it one day in the 1960s a proud area farmer invited us to see his new factory farm long sheds packed with rows of battery cages stacked high and stuffed with egg-laying hens the fans were deafening tiny feathers filled the air we were breathing and chickens with barely enough room to whittle squawked out their pitiful cries Oblivious, we drove home, simply appreciative of the gift of a dozen eggs. How did we not recognize their suffering? <clears throat> Some of the music you're hearing today was composed by animal advocate and author Dr. Will Tuttle. In his book, The World Peace Diet, he explains that society conditions us to accept without question the pain and suffering of animals. So being unaware and unaffected is not uncommon. Until each of us chooses to stop, listen, and learn, turning a blind eye keeps our complicity active and abusive industries lucrative. Now you may ask, of all the problems in the world, why focus on non-human animals? My journey toward veganism really took a stronghold when my sister Pam made, <laughs> made the statement, don't support abusive industry. Um, what? I began then to learn about factory farming, what actually happens to the animals, to the farm workers, and to the environment affecting society as a whole. Animals are sentient beings with a language of their own and an inherent right to their lives. Prior to becoming vegetarian, I believed if it was once alive, I won't eat it. This ultimately eliminated everything but popcorn and water. That wasn't going to work. But it has been established that plants feel emotion. So now what? How do we decide it's okay to eat plants but not animals? Eventually, I came to realize that plants are rooted. If you chase them, they stay in place. Yet chase an animal and they flee. I now live by the mantra, if they can flee, let them be. Say it with me. If they can flee, let them be. <coughs> For 21 years I was vegetarian, drinking milk, eating eggs, wearing leather and wool, satisfied with everything in moderation. I believed I had done enough, so I need not do more. Then in 2001, Greg and I rented a cabin from a sanctuary in Watkins Glen. One morning, a vet came to do routine exams. It was the cry of one pig, confined to a small pen for her exam, 
that stirred up her memories of being incarcerated in a gestation crate. Her screams haunted me, and in an instant, I dedicated myself to veganism. The word vegan was coined in 1944 by British Vegan Society President Elsie Shrigley and fellow member Donald Watson. Together, Shrigley and Watson defined veganism as a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose, and promotes animal-free alternatives for the benefit of humans, animals, and the environment. Around, 19, around, excuse me, around 2010, national animal rights leaders expanded the definition now known as the vegan ethic. Veganism is a moral and ethical way of living, the practice of non-cooperation and non-participation in anything that exploits non-human animals, humans, or the environment. It is a moral baseline for our conduct and how we are revealed to the world. Nobody wants to see what goes on in animal agriculture. It's easier to buy neatly packaged slain body parts from what I call the grocer's morgue. We don't want to witness any of the animal suffering. Even though we feel compassion, it's much nicer when out of sight, out of mind. And some claim veganism is elitist and too expensive. Let's consider who's actually paying the price, what we require farm workers to do, how we dominate and force animals to sacrifice, and why we believe we are so entitled. Migrant farm workers do the work that nobody else wants to do. Why isn't it you or me? Consider the slaughterhouse. Who but the desperate would slit throats for a living? And I've heard said, it's just one bad day. Seriously, that statement is naive, insensitive, and simply put, false. Animal agriculture is a lifetime of egregious suffering and misery for animals. So with that mindset, why then, do we assume respect is going to be shown by that same farmer to a farm worker? Of course, there are kinder, gentler farmers. But let's ask if, in the long run, the migrant farm worker receives benefits you or I would expect, or if the animal's ultimate purpose and sacrifice is any different? The answer is no. To quote Alice Walker, the animals of the world exist for their own reasons. They were not made for humans. Any more than black people were made for white or women created for men. Farm workers are incredibly pressured to fill a quota and do their work in an unreasonable amount of time, such that neither compassion nor humane slaughter is even remotely attainable. Given society's expectations today, we want what we want and we want it now. They must keep up with the increasing demand. You've likely seen footage of the speedy conveyor belts in a recycling center. And recall that episode on I Love Lucy, when Lucy and Ethel get a job at the chocolate factory? At first, the job seems manageable. But the grumpy boss speeds up that conveyor belt. Neither Lucy nor Ethel can keep up. Chocolate flies all over the place. It's impossible to keep things neat and orderly or to complete the job. However, if they want that job, they keep up or get out. Farm workers are under a pressure much more harsh than the chocolate factory. We support this system when we buy animal products. Let's look at eggs. It all begins at the hatchery. 
female chicks are billion because they lay eggs males cannot so they are immediately killed the history is the source of all eggs whether they end up in a battery cage factory farm or a cage free facility there are small farm exceptions but they are outnumbered corporate farms genetically manipulate hens to produce hundreds of eggs more per year than their natural state this depletes their bodies of calcium leading to debilitating osteoporosis it's the farm workers who determine the fate of each newly hatched life by an overwhelming pressure racing to meet their quota so when we buy eggs we are supporting use of industry I choose not to do so milk is produced only when a cow has given birth within 24 hours the newborn calf is dragged away from the moaning mother never to bind males become veal females become future dairy cows dairy farms who profit off her body keep her lactating within a few months after giving birth mother cow is artificially inseminated again in what is called the rape rat it's the farm workers who must maintain this high pressure system to satisfy corporate profit and our palate when we buy dairy milk cheese butter ice cream we are supporting this abusive industry i choose not to do so the majority of animal derived food in the united states comes from factory farms resulting anaerobic lagoons affect the environment and health of the farm workers lagoons primarily pigs and cows are man-made outdoor basins filled with a manure slurry washed out from underneath animal pens with vast amounts of water these conditions eventually convert into carbon dioxide and methane in november of 2006 the united nations stated quote rearing cattle produces more greenhouse gases than driving cars and in August of 2019, the United Nations stated, quote, we need to reform our farming system by ending the stranglehold a handful of multinational corporations have over our vast food economy in America. It's time to end factory farming, unquote. The good news is that awareness is increasing. Many already reduce or work to eliminate suffering and exploitation and much gratitude goes to those who have created nutritious delicious foods that we can now buy pretty much everywhere vegan options are growing even the fast food industry is, is getting on board we love rochester's all vegan establishments the red fern natural oasis new epic pizza cafe in aranakoi Miss Fitz Donuts, Kitchen Bear Day, and more and more farmers are now switching from animal agriculture to crops. Animal free fabric choices abound, rejecting fur, silk, wool, and leather. And we're very grateful for nearby farmed animal sanctuaries Mockingbird in Vibrant, New York, and Asha in Newfang, New York. New York State has just enacted a new law requiring that all hospitals offer patients vegan options. More and more doctors are finding remarkable health benefits with the vegan diet. Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine is a national organization of doctors, and they have advanced treatments and medicines without animal experimentation. The orcas in SeaWorld's aqua prison, although they can never be set free, are no longer exploited for entertainment. Ringling Circus finally shut down after their abuse was revealed 
and they were rejected by the ticket-buying public. No one knows what goes on behind closed doors or curtains until whistleblowers expose them. So vote with your fork. Feel good about any step you take away from unintentional support of abusive systems, systems that exploit animals, migrant farm workers, and the environment. Let's each stop to think about and become aware of what our next purchase or mouthful is supporting. And transportation is part of this as well. There's a lot of suffering in the transportation of animals in order to get to this point. It is not difficult. It is a choice. Peace begins on your plate. Our seventh Unitarian Universalist principle reads, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. I believe all beings have worth and dignity. I believe in placing the worth of the souls of animals equally next to our own. I believe we are each capable of opening our hearts to weave in one more thread of compassion. We can expand our awareness by respecting non-human animals with our words and with our daily choices. Maya Angelou said, you did then what you knew how to do, and when you knew better, you did better. Let us embrace a 2020 vegan vision as we enter the new year. May it be so.